Hey, this is Eric Rader with Pianosecrets.com, and are you completely confused on why a E flat is also called a D sharp? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why that is, and I have three easy charts that you can use and that you can download for free that are going to explain all of it and make it super simple. So the reason that these notes have the same name and the reason why you can call an E flat and a D sharp the same note is because they're what's known as enharmonic equivalents. Well, this is basically a really confusing way of explaining how to name notes that are relative to one another. So in music, if you're looking at the piano, we use the notes such as the E flat and D sharp to name the black keys on the piano. And the reason that we have to do this is because these notes don't have a specific name or a natural name like C through A, and we have to give it a name relative to another note on the piano. So what we do in music is we call them both flats and sharps, and this is what's known as an enharmonic equivalent. So rather than us sitting here and talking about it all day, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the three different charts that I have that you can use to make these enharmonic equivalents make complete sense and it's really easy and I have a download. So if you go look into the description box, there's a free download that you can download all three of these charts and it shows you exactly how we can name these things and how you can understand the naming process of all these different notes. So go ahead and click the description, click the link in the description and download the free chart now. All right, so let's take a look at our first chart in our uh, series of three different charts that we're going to be taking a look at in this video. So this first one is just a picture of the piano keys, and it's the full octave, C through B. And if you take a look, you can see that there are several different notes listed on each of the different keys. So, for example, if you take a look at this um, particular note right here, this is the D flat note. And if you look, you also can see that above that you have a C sharp note as well. So that tells us that the D flat note can also be called a C sharp note. And we also have this one up here at the top, which this is called a B double sharp. And that's what this little cross looking symbol represents is a double sharp. So this tells us that we are two sharps up from a B. So that means if you come up here to this note up here, which would be um, a B right here, we can that would be two sharps up would give us this note right here. So the enharmonic equivalents would be D flat, C sharp, and B double sharp. And the same thing is for the C down here we've got, this is originally known as a C natural, but we can also call it a B double flat, and that's what these two flat symbols mean is a B double flat, as well as a B sharp. And this chart is super awesome because it shows you every single equivalent on the piano. And if you ever get stuck or confused, you can just take this chart, pull it out, and it will give you every single one of the enharmonic equivalents on the keyboard. So it's a really quick, uh, quick uh, little chart that you can use. So just one more example, let's take a look at this G right here. This is called a G natural, and this can also be called an A double flat or an F double sharp. Now, if you take a look at every single one of these notes, you'll uh, you'll notice that every one of them have three enharmonic equivalents, except for the A flat and G sharp right here. And the reason for that is, is because this is the only note that doesn't have a, um, a double sharp or double flat natural note. So for example, the only double sharp would be this note right here. And that's not a natural key. So we can't call this G flat double sharp. That wouldn't make any sense. And you, you also couldn't call it uh, B flat double flat or, or B triple flat or something like that. Um, you, you know, we only read music in double sharps and double flats. So, and you also couldn't call it a sharp double flat that wouldn't make any sense so all of these different um all of these different keys on the piano have three um enharmonic equivalents except for the a flat and g sharp note right here so um, that's just another thing that you need to take into consideration is that you can name each of the different keys on the piano three different notes a um an and except for the A flat G sharp note that's listed here. So this is just a really helpful tip. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at the other charts in uh, our series. 
All right, so the next two charts that we're going to be looking at are pretty similar to each other, but there's a couple of key differences that I wanted to take a minute to explain really quickly. So if you take a look at the chart here on the left, this chart is set up in um, a way that it kind of mimics the way that the piano keyboard is set up. And what I mean by that is, is if you take a look at this blue column here, this blue column represents all of the natural notes, and it goes in order of... Um, those natural keys as far as C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And as you can see that there's a space in between where there would be a space for a black key. So we have C, and this is where D flat, C, C sharp would be. You've got D, this is where D sharp, E flat would be. E, F, uh, F sharp, and G, and so forth going on up the, the keyboard. So <clears throat> if you take a look at this center, column this is where you would represent your natural keys then you've got your sharps on the right as typically how the piano works you have sharps to the right of the natural and then you've got the double sharps here on the far right side then on the left of the natural you have your flats and then to the left of that as well you've got your double flats and so how this chart works is we look at our natural note here in the center and then this is going to tell us what enharmonic equivalents are equivalent to this C natural. You've got a B sharp as well as a D double flat down here. And then if you move down to the next key, we can see that we don't have any notes in the natural because the next one up would be obviously a D flat or a C sharp. And then you've got the B double sharp that is equivalent to those notes. So going across are the keys that are equivalent to each other. Moving on, you've got your D. Then you've got your C, uh, C double sharp, and then your E double flat um, that go along with your D equivalent notes. And then moving forward, you've got E flat and D sharp, which is equivalent to F double flat. And then moving up the keyboard, you can see how the chart clearly lays out all of the different um, equivalent notes. So that's how this chart uh, it works. You know, you have to look down the center aisle is your uh, naturals. To the right is your sharps and then double sharps and then to the left is flat and double flats. Okay, now moving on to this other chart on the right, what we have here is um, th what, how this is set up is you've got your notes on the left column and then you've got the first equivalent note and then you've got your second equivalent note going down the, uh, the side here. So um, if you take a look at this, um, we have all of the notes going in order from C, C sharp, D flat, D, D sharp, E flat, E, E sharp, F flat, F, and F sharp. So you've got every single um, possible note name going down the left side here. Then across, you've got each of the different equivalent notes that go along with that note. So you've got your, um, with the C, you've got your B sharp, and then you've got your D double flat. And if you look at this chart over here, you can see how it, it matches up. You've got your C, B sharp, D double flat, C, B sharp, D double flat. Then you've got your C sharp right here, and then you've got its equivalent with B double sharp and D flat, and D flat is C sharp and B double flat, and so on. So each of these two different charts are going to give you a different perspective and kind of give you a different um, way to kind of visualize and look at how these enharmonic equivalent notes work together and how they go together on the keyboard. So both of these are very helpful. Um, it's important that if you want to um, have a, a visualized idea of using your enharmonic equivalences, go ahead, click the link in the description box to download these uh, three charts. Um, they're completely free. Just click on the link and you can get a copy of all of these um, different charts. Now, if you're going to be using these, if you're going to go and grab these charts and put them to good use, make sure that you go down in the comments section below the video and let me know. Give me, an, give me a shout out and let me know that you're going to be using them and how you're going to be using them in the comment section below. So um, there you have it. Those are the charts. Go ahead and click the link in the description and grab your copies right now. So if you want to get your copy of these three charts, just make sure that you click the link in the description box below and you can get a free copy of all three of these charts and you can download them directly to your computer. And make sure if you like the video that you click the like button and make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get all of the new videos that are coming out. And make sure that you share it with somebody. If you know somebody that would be interested in learning this enharmonic equivalent stuff, make sure that you share it with them so that they can get some help too. And make sure that you click the bell so that you can get notified of any time that we upload new videos and I will see you on the next one.